Hey Blender Bob here. This is a remake of a previous clip I did like two years ago, but this one is much better. It's shorter and better technique. So I learned from your comments and everything. And you know, I just learned in general. So here's the new version. So in Adobe Illustrator, you exported your logo as an SVG and now you import it in Blender also as an SVG. And you will see that once you import it, it's going to be super tiny on screen. So there it is. It's super tiny in the center. So you select everything, make the scale at 100. You can press Alt to scale them all at the same time. Now I'm gonna do a 90 degree rotation in X because I wanna work from the front view, not from the top view. If you use the gizmo, you can press Ctrl to rotate in increments of five degrees, or you can just press X and 90. The next step is to convert everything into a mesh. We can see that for some reason, there's a problem with the R. So what I'm gonna do is to select all the polygons that makes the whole of the R, and I'm just gonna separate them. We're gonna deal with them later. Whoa, 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 what is that pie menu we just saw? Well, that's because I use Pie Menu Editor. It's an add-on that allows you to create your own pie menus. If you wanna learn more about it, you can look at my Maya to Blender Survival Guide. The clip is up there. And also, I do not display the hotkeys I'm using because I completely remap my keyboard, but it's the same function. So if you see me do extrude or do something like this, it's the same thing as going in the menus. All right. Okay, now I will select everything and apply the transformation. This will avoid troubles when we're gonna do the bevels later. For some obscure reason, I only have edges for the R, so I will select all the edges and press F to fill them. And now it's a polygon like the other letters. The first step of the cleanup is to remove all the points that are on a straight line. We don't need them, we want to keep the geometry as light as possible. To clean up the curves, I'm going to select all the points except for the first one and the last one because I don't want them to be influenced by the next step. And that next step is called Merge by Distance, and you will find it in the Mesh menu, Cleanup, merge by distance. And if you change the distance here, you will see the points will collapse one another until you have less and less and less points. Okay, I'm happy with that. The problem is that they don't have the same distance. So we're gonna fix it using loop tool. But this time I need the two points at the beginning and the end. So you go loop tool, right click select, and you have here in the loop tool, you have space. And you can see it does magic. All the points are at the same distance from one another. Oops, I forgot to do these points, so delete. And uh, yeah, since I use the space all the time, I added it to one of my pie menus, so I just need to go space and that's it. Okay, let's move on to this part. So same thing, I press F to clean up all the bad polygons. There's something weird going on here, so I can try to fix it, but you know what? I feel a little bit lazy, so I'm just gonna try what I did before. But first I'm gonna clean up these straight lines here, so this one and this one, okay. So merge by distance first. I got a hotkey for it because I use it all the time also. I will just tweak it a little bit. So let's see. Okay, that's pretty good. And then space. Yeah, okay, that's good. It's a little bit rough here. Maybe I could use more points, but we'll deal with this later. Moving on to the letter A. This one gave me some trouble. I don't know why. So I tried to merge the polygons. You have to do it little by little. You don't want to merge everything in one shot in this case because there's a hole in the center and that doesn't work properly. This part here didn't work well at all. I couldn't merge the polygons together. I don't know what was going on here. I tried to insert edges. I tried to delete faces. I tried a lot of stuff. It just wouldn't work. And then something strange happened. I selected all these edges here. I deleted them and poof. Okay, all right, what's going on here? I don't know. But I didn't like these edges that are tangent to the curve here. So not a very good idea. So I decided to play it safe. So I just cut from here to here, pressing J and removed these edges. After that, everything went well for the cleanup. So it's just the regular stuff I've shown you before. I didn't run into any issues for the rest of the letters. Everything went perfectly. My letter R is darker than the other one and that's probably because the normals are inverted. And if you wanna see it, you wanna turn on the face orientation right here. If you don't see anything, it's because you are in X-ray mode. So turn it off and then you will see. So blue is good, red is bad. Select your face and you can go into the mesh menu normal and flip it. Okay, now I select all the letters except for the center of the R and I merge them together pressing J. And now I can go into face mode, select all the faces and extrude them. I will do the same thing with the center of the letter R, but I wanna make sure that it's gonna be thicker than the other letters. Now we need to do a Boolean to cut the center of the R. The easiest way to do this is with the bool tool add-on where you select the center, then the outer letter, you press Ctrl and minus on the keypad and it's gonna create the modifier for you. To that, you can apply the modifier and you can delete the original geometry here. It's now a box. So now you get the hole here in the R. Okay, so now let's add a bevel modifier. I will turn off the face orientation. I have a pie menu for that also. 
Okay, better. Let's take a closer look. It's very small. It's very tiny. So let's try to make it bigger. So I will change the amount here. First of all, I want two divisions. I will change the amount here and you see it doesn't do anything. That's because there's something wrong with the geometry and it cannot do it. So there's a way to check. You can go in the geometry here and you want to remove the clamp overlap and suddenly, whoa, okay. So now you can adjust it and you will get your bevel but you will see that there are some problems somewhere. You can see there's a big line in, on top of the R. The corners are not nice also. You don't want this for corners, you want arc for the interior corners so you get something much nicer here. But you see here, this is a problem here and that's why the bevel could not be done. Also, the letters don't look flat anymore. You can see all the edges everywhere. So for this, you go into shading and go harden normals and now you get something better. Now let's try to fix the issues here. What's going on? Well, there's a bad corner here. If I go into edge mode, you can see there's an edge here that I don't need. So I just delete it and now it works. I get a clean R. Cool. If I change the amount of the bevel, the, the bevel, not the bevel, the bevel, you can see there's something wrong going on here on top. And that's because of the angle. So what we're going to do is change the angle instead of 30 degrees. We'll make it bigger and that should fix it. Now let's say I would like to have more subdivision on the top of the A here. I will turn off the bevel modifier and what I can do is by pressing shift and control I can select these edges here from here to here and I can press shift W to subdivide them. So yeah it's subdivided but it's not a smooth curve. So I will try what I did before. I will select all the vertices and I will go into space but boom. Whoa what's going on? Doesn't work. Okay let's go to plan B. We're going to use another add-on called edge flow. And the way it works is I want to select all the edges except for the first one and the last one. And then you right click here and you go to set flow. And now you get a nice round curve. If you get into a situation where you need to remove edges because you have too many, you can select one out of two and then you press alt cursor up and will select one out of two edges. If you select one out of three, it will skip every two edges. One out of four, well, you get the idea. I just hope it's not some kind of add-on or preferences that I change and you won't have it. You may run into situations where the bevels don't work well with end guns, so faces that have more than four polygons like this one and concave surfaces, concave polygons. So you may want to cut the geometry to give it some help. So there are different ways you can do this. You can select two points, two vertices and press J to connect them. You can use a knife tool. You can use the loop tool on the thickness and then connect the dots. So yeah, in this case it didn't do much, but let's take a look at the letter R because it's far from being perfect. Okay, so there's something funky going on here. I will turn off the bevel modifier to see what it looks like. Poof. All right, we don't want this, so easy fix. I'm just going to select this vertex here and connect it with this one, letter J, and delete this edge. And I need to rebuild the edge to make all the points at equal distance. So edge, control shift, edge, and space. Don't forget to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so I did some cleanup here and there. Now let's take a look if I turn back on the bevel modifier. Oh, dude, come on. Okay, you know what? I'm going to select all the back faces here. I'm going to grow the selection, pressing shift and cursor up and delete these faces. Then I'm just going to select all these faces again and extrude them again and see what it does. So extrude, I turn on the snap two vertices and I move it to make sure it has the same thickness as the other one. Let's check the normals. They're inverted, so I select all the faces. I flip them, and now it's fine. Okay, bevel modifier on. Come on, dude, you're kidding me. How come it works on one side but not the other one? It's an extrusion. It should be the same geometry. Okay, let's try this. I told you before the A, I added some edges to give it some help. Well, let's see here if I add these edge loops here and I connect the vertices from this one to this one. Press J, this one, this one, J. Same thing on the other side. Clack, clack, J, clack, clack, J. All right, let's turn back on the bevel modifier and it works. Quick inspection, everything looks good. Yeah, all right, now we're gonna give it the ultimate test. Click here, mat cap, and select this one here, and that's the ultimate test. Yeah, it looks awesome. We are done. So for those of you worried about my cat because I blew him up last time. Shut up! Well, he's just fine, cats have nine lives, so Eight to go. Hmm? Musha. Musha. Mm. Well, kiss you. Musha. Well. Well. Well.